Hello, love. This is Eve Kristoff, your love life muse. Stick with me for the hottest news and subscribe to this channel to get somewhere new. Is she frigid? <laughs> is she frigid? Is she teasing you? Or is she high, high value? <laughs> you know, how do I talk about this without being really offensive to women? Well, easy. <laughs> I'll tell you how. Frigidity is a word used against women for whenever we are feeling uncomfortable sexually, like things just aren't going right for us to open up, we are called frigid. It's just like when women want sex and, and need it and, and deeply have to have it and then are called hysterical because we're passionate and desirous. Okay, there's all these terms against the feminine. Now, knowing this, this truth way that it tends to work in guys' favor, there is, though, the real situation of a woman being uh, so um, actually closed off to her sexuality, afraid of it, disgusted by her own body, disgusted by your body, uh, puritanically thinking um, maybe she's been poisoned by religion that has made her think that our bodies are not beautiful and sacred. And when a woman is like that, it's like there's just nothing you can do because she's already, she's poisoned uh, herself, she's poisoning you. Uh, but there's a much more subtle uh, kind of frigidity that it's not so blatant and and you kind of want to know this before you get involved like really committed to a woman um, right because you want to know is she gonna be is she gonna be sexual with me uh, what's her natural proclivity <laughs> well I mean there's things you can look for you can say well does she dance does she smile does she um, laugh does she enjoy her food? These are all things that <laughs> relate to the labia. <laughs> you know, how open her pussy is has a lot to do with her, her mouth. <laughs> is it open? Does she smile? Does she laugh? And her body, does she dance? Does she enjoy sensuality? Does she enjoy her food? <laughs> you can look for these clues to see how sexy a woman is. Does she really enjoy her food? Or is she on a diet constantly? Because if she's on a physical diet to make herself lovable, it's likely you're going to be on a sex diet <laughs> to make you lovable <laughs> or her feel, you know, like you're doing what you have to. <laughs> but let's dive even a little deeper, okay? Where are you going to find an undamaged woman in this world? You're not going to find her. Very, very, very rare. Because this is a world that is so anti-supportive um, of the feminine beings on the planet right now. And, and in hundreds and hundreds of ways that you as guys can't see. Because you have the privileges, you can't even see the bias most of the time. Except for the guys who've studied this and really, really looking into it. Thank you. Because you're, you can see it right in front of you, plain as day, right? <laughs> well, there's this thing that is a whole nother reason why a woman is, quote, frigid or uh, teasing you or just not putting out. And this has to do with a really high value woman to herself. I mean, all women are high, highly valuable, but this is a woman who values her own purity, her own sense of deep integrity, her, her, her desire for something extremely sacred. So, and this is the woman that you can see is there, right there before you, and you're like, why isn't she opening up sexually, right? Why doesn't she? With all kinds of, she's got all kinds of options. She's beautiful. This is called, or I'm calling it, um, eternal virgin syndrome. <laughs> I'm making another video for, for women. You should watch that too, if you're a guy. <laughs> but eternal virgin syndrome comes when what a woman wants, she's had once in her life, or, or maybe not yet, um, really pure, high love on her vibrational level of the angels, okay? Of the sexy angels. <laughs> and she went all the way there with somebody, or she dreams of doing this, and she was shamed for it, right? And she was put down, or suddenly um, they, the man was presumptuous and, um, 
and took her for granted. And then what happens is she closes off forever until she finds that pure connection again. And she goes years and years and years and years without sexual connection. And then suddenly she'll break down and be like a slut for a little while to compensate. And she'll wake up from that nightmare a couple years later or months later and be back to her pious um, purity of no sex ever until she finds the one. So how can you be the one, you know, is an important question because actually this woman is, is incredible. She, she is so devoted to love and her, her own sacredness that she will not compromise. So there, <laughs> there's one way to look at this. It's like, okay, so to be with this kind of woman, does this mean like years and years of therapy to help open her up? That's one way it could go. But there's another way it could go that's in your control. <laughs> and that is the lost art of courtship. <laughs> Does that sound simple? It is. It is. It's simple. It is a lost art. <laughs> and it was the way that women were, were opened up for, for thousands of years. There was a way that, that guys would give gifts, would give word flowers, would show their commitment, would show up regularly, show that they wouldn't... Uh, they were worthy of trust, um, would, would wait, would, would um, become her friend, would get to know her, would get to know her family, would um, do prayers with her before even uh, marriage, you know, there would be marriage before sex. There's a lot of really good stuff about this. I, I even saw um, this uh, incredible um, preacher couple. Uh, from the gospel tradition, who um, were really sexy people, had been with lots of people in their lifetimes, but when they met each other, they knew it was so sacred, they decided to go a whole year without sex to deeply know each other and create that emotional bond before they had sex. And, and um, <laughs> they were married as virgins to each other. <laughs> so the lost art of courtship with the, the, the high virgin syndrome changes her because this is all she ever really needed. She needed to be treated like the, the, the goddess um, temple uh, um, angel that she is. She needed to be treated with, with absolute care and love and, and, and deep high resonance with her true love energy level. So if you try to bring her down to your level, like, oh, come on, let's just have sex, or, or why do you have to be so, uh, you are, <laughs> you are really base. You, you don't, you're not at her level. She's at a high vibe level. Um, so do you have the patience to court somebody when you could just get it free? You could just go on Tinder and get fucked. <laughs> yeah, you could. Well, maybe you could. <laughs> but the thing is, your heart your heart, when you keep engaging in sexuality without paying anything for it, what you're doing is you are a capitalist. Capitalism is a false concept because the whole idea of getting something for more than you give and then harvesting others to get more and, and being proud of that, that is completely anti the way the, the universe is set up because our universe, and you can see this for yourself, you look around you, everything's in exchange, right? The, 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 the water is rising to the sky, the clouds are falling to the earth, the plants are giving their, what is it, their, their carbon um, emission? No, <laughs> the plants are giving something that we breathe. <laughs> forgot what it is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, everything's in exchange at all times. And, and this is the beauty of existence is giving all you have and then <gasps> taking in all that's given. Okay. So if you're going to be capitalistic about women where you think you can just get sex without giving your enough, without exchanging, uh, well, you're never going to have love. You'll, you'll just have sex. And in the end, you'll feel so disillusioned because you'll be like, what was the big deal? That's all there is? Just fucking? You know, you'll miss out on what 
how sex changes, completely changes, when it's full of love and devotion and passion and spirituality and, and you open to these other divine levels where suddenly the nadis, the, that's a ter an Indian term for like the, the, the meridians throughout your body open up and energy gushes through you and you suddenly you flush and you blush and you sweat and, you, um, and your heart palpitates and your, your spirit opens this only happens when you pay dues to love. <laughs> you pay homage to love. So the lost art of courtship will change a, quote, frigid woman into the most luscious, sexual, dynamic, passionate, uh, <laughs> pussy pleasure palace uh, <laughs> sharing um, uh, companion <laughs> that you've ever, ever known. So how do you do the lost art of courtship? Well, a lot of my videos have are full of that, uh, and um, and and most of the, the the stuff they have online, the, the self help stuff is is pretty shallow. It's all about getting somebody fast, and it's not actually about love. So I would really recommend to you Deepak Chopra's work on love and relationship because he's coming from an ancient Indian tradition and the Kama Sutra is a very sexy book that's from India you know he's not divorcing sexuality from love but he's coming from really really a, a completely different paradigm than the American capitalistic paradigm that gets overlaid on to everything nature each other our jobs and love and um, so check out Deepak Chopra's work, okay? Much love to you, darling. Love life. I hope this opens up many doors to you. The Lost Art of Courtship. Find it.